Ah, the all-seeing eye of Agamotto, Doctor Strange's most powerful of artifacts. While Strange is seen wearing this amulet around the clock, I sometimes wonder where he stores it when he is off duty. I mean, he can't possibly just leave something so precious just hanging in the closet while he sleeps. Let's design a plastic enclosure for the Sorcerer Supreme to store the eye while he is not using it to weaken evil mystical beings, probe the minds of others, or create portals to other dimensions. As you'll see later in this series, we'll be using the eye's powers to transport into the mysterious universe of fascinating features. Stay tuned and you'll come away realizing that these features aren't so strange, even for the uninitiated. Let's start in a new part file by importing our Eye of Agamotto to design our enclosure around. In a later portion of this series, I'm going to use some of the part sketches and construction surfaces, so I'm going to make sure surface bodies and absorbed sketches are checked for import as well. I also want the parts appearances to import, so I'm going to check Propagate from Original Part under Visual Properties. Clicking the green check mark will place the part in relation to the origin that it was built in the original file. We're going to create a simple elliptical extrusion for the shell of this enclosure, so let's sketch on the top plane. And I'm going to use some construction geometry to offset the ellipse 3 eighths of an inch from the outer rim of the part. So we'll just use the ellipse tool to snap to these dimensioned construction points. Before exiting this sketch, I want to create a few flat spots on our enclosure where later in this series I will be placing some cantilever snap hooks. Let's just add some horizontal relations to these points to make them symmetrical. And we'll use the trim tool to trim away the portion of the ellipse we no longer need. At this point we could do a blind extrusion to a certain dimension, but instead I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane so I can control how far away from the bottom of the artifact our extrusion will terminate. I'm simply creating a construction line coincident with the bottom of the part, dimensioned to 0.04 inches long. In the Extruded Boss tool, in the Direction 1 dropdown, select Up to Vertex and click the point where our construction line terminates. Let's deselect the merge results so our extrusion doesn't merge to our reference part. And we're going to design this enclosure for plastic injection, so let's set a draft angle of 2 degrees drafted inward. Now let's soften up the outer edges of our part with a few fillets. We'll do a 0.5 inch fillet to blend the flats in. and a 0.25 inch fillet on the bottom edge of the part. Now we're going to hollow out our enclosure using the shell tool. We want a uniform wall thickness of 0.08 inches. So let's navigate to the shell command in the command manager and in the shell property manager you can enter your wall thickness value and select the faces you'd like to remove. In this case we'll select our top face here. And we want to maintain our 0.375 inch offset from the perimeter of the part, so we're going to shell this outwards instead of inwards. The actual amulet is worn with a leather cord, so let's use the revolved cut tool to create some circular cuts in our shell to clear the cord. I'll just sketch on the top face of our enclosure and start by sketching the center line of the revolve. As you'll see, I'm snapping the sketch to our reference part, and I'll set some relations and dimensions to fully constrain the sketch.
With the sketch highlighted, simply navigate to the Revolved Cut command in the Command Manager, and we'll select the center line to revolve our sketch around. Under the Feature Scope, let's just select the enclosure part so we don't also cut into the eye. Let's go ahead and mirror that feature to the other side. We'll select the mirror plane, in this case the right plane, navigate to the Mirror command, and select the Revolve Cut in the History tree. Now to prevent the Eye of Agamotto from moving around too much in our enclosure, we need to create a cradle in the inside of our enclosure. To maintain uniform wall thickness throughout the part, we can use the Rib feature to create some drafted ribs to support the artifact. So let's start by creating a construction plane. Under Construction Geometry in the Command Manager, select Plane. And I'm going to offset this plane from the bottom of the outer rim of our artifact, 0 0.015 inches. This is where the top of our support ribs will sit. Let's sketch on this plane and lay out a top view of our rib structure. I'm going to snap several linear lines to the inner wall of our part. However, the nice thing about the rib tool is you don't necessarily need your sketch to snap to where you want the rib to terminate. You can have your sketch lines terminate outside of your part and the rib tool will function just fine. Let's just dimension the spacing between these lines to make sure the ribs don't interfere with where the leather cords come through. You'll find the rib feature under Insert, Features, Rib, or you should see it in the Command Manager as well. Into the Rib tool and in the Property Manager, you can set the thickness of the ribs at either the sketch plane or where it will interface the part. In this case, we want the top of our ribs to be 0 0.04 inches, and we'll want them to draft outwards 2 degrees so they will be slightly thicker where they interface the part. And it's as simple as that. We are on our way to providing Doctor Strange a safe place for his Eye of Agamotto. Stay tuned for part two of this series, where we will use some unique modeling tools to finish up our enclosure's cradle before moving on to applying our fastening features.